It is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce to you this morning a man whose name is synonymous around the world with the game of golf and with the Masters. A man who 50 years ago this week won his first of four Masters tournaments. Ladies and gentlemen, on the tee, a man respected around the world, Mr. Arnold Palmer. Arnold, the tea is yours. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2008 Masters has now officially begun. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. The green jacket. The green jacket means. The green jacket means that you're part of history. The history, the legend. It's a symbol of excellence. The green jacket means a great deal to me. The green jacket means he won one of the greatest championships in all of golf. A lot of dreams have come true. Just very special. Some of the greatest players that have ever played the game have won this event. The most amazing thing is that you're, you're part of this club. It's a responsibility and a privilege to be a part of an elite fraternity. This means an awful lot to carry that and wear that green jacket. We're very proud to put this jacket on every year. It is one of the greatest things that can happen in a golfer's lifetime. The Masters. It's all about tradition. And it's all about change with a purpose. Tradition, the Tuesday night champion's dinner. Zach Johnson, the newest member of this distinguished group, selects the menu. Tradition, the Wednesday part three contest where players are in the spotlight and share time with their kids. For the first time, the nine-hole contest is being televised, and a global audience sees the threesome of player Nicholas and Palmer teeing it up once again. Palmer at the first hole. Nicholas at the last. Fred Couples at seven, Paul Azinger at two. Rory Sabatini at nine. He tied for second in last year's Masters. He starts this week with a first place finish. The beginning of the first round is delayed one hour by fog. There's a new initiative to encourage children to attend the Masters. We'll tell you more about that later. At 9 a.m., Ben Curtis is the first in the field of 94. Gary Player begins his 51st Masters, one more than the record he shared with Arnold Palmer. Fred Couples will try to make his 24th straight cut, which would break the record he shares with Gary Player. Three men from the same high school in the small town of Milton, Florida, are playing their first Masters. Bubba Watson. Boo Weekly. And Heath Slocum, who birdies three of the first eight holes and takes the early lead. Tiger Woods is playing his 14th Masters. This major is so important to, to all of us. I've been lucky enough to have, have won it four times. And I just love getting out there and mixing up with the guys here. And uh, they're trying to beat me. I'm trying to beat them. That's fun.
He's having trouble gauging the swirling winds. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That's 15 yards short. Wrong Gus, wrong time. His third shot here at seven. Appears headed for more trouble. And then almost goes in the hole. He's even par. Zach Johnson at the par 3 12th. And the first round, 70. My, my whole approach uh, today was, um, what is today, April 10th? Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was playing Thursday, April 10th of 2008. And, you know, 2007 was gone. Um, it was a good year. <laughs> Tiger, second shot at the par 5, 13th. Leads to a bogey. Justin Rose birdied the last four holes on the first nine and added birdies at 12 and here at 13. Parring in for a 68. Trevor Immelman at nine. He's battled health issues for the past year. Missed the cut in his most recent tournament. But Birdie's here and is out in 34. Now at 11. Almost an eagle and a round of 68. I hit a few good shots today and, and saw the ball going in the hole a couple times. And, you know, you start uh, remembering that you're a fairly good player. <laughs> Another change at the 2008 Masters is found at the end of a scenic pathway, a new viewing area. The 16th green is in front of you, 15 to the right, the 6th green at the top of your picture. A great vantage point for shots like this by Stuart Sink, his second on the par 3 16th. He finished with a 72. There are three amateurs in the field. This is Drew Weaver, the 20-year-old British amateur champion from Virginia Tech, also on the 16th. On his way to a 76. Roars punctuated this day. One was for Tiger Woods at 15. An eagle. Worth another look. But he's never broken 70 in the first round here. Another was for Phil Mickelson over the green at number one. He won in 2004 and 2006 and would like to add another even year title. The loudest was for Ian Poulter at 16. Five players score in the 60s. Justin Rose has held or been tied for the first round lead in each of his last three Masters. Poulter's 70 ties him for sixth, one ahead of Mickelson and two ahead of Woods. Michael Thompson is a low amateur on day one. And Fred Couples' cut streak is in jeopardy after a 76.
New this year, children 8 to 16 are admitted free. Come on, young man, we get to go to the Masters today. As long as they're accompanied by an accredited patron, it's all part of a new program to spur the worldwide growth of the game. All were invited to contribute their own ideas at the tournament website, masters.org. <laughs> On Friday at the 13th hole, Miguel Angel Jimenez comes within an inch of making the fourth double eagle in tournament history. He shoots 70. At six, Brant Snedeker and Trevor Immelman face nearly identical shots. Immelman chooses to putt. And the ball will ultimately roll off the green. Strategy and imagination are so important on this course. Snedeker elects to chip from the putting surface. And makes birdie. I was just more nervous over that shot than I was all day because I knew if I, if, I, if I messed it up, people were going to have a field day with me on that one. So uh, I had to pull it off. Immelman, after making bogey at six, pulls his drive into the trees at seven. but gets a favorable bounce into the fairway, which leads to this birdie putt. Go. Go. And a tie for the lead. Steve Flesh, second shot at 13. Thought he had too much club. I thought it rolled off the back edge, which, you know, is fine, but I was going to try and kind of make a point to my caddy that it wasn't the right club. <laughs> uh, but, you know, then you kind of heard the crowd kind of reacting to it. And he goes, dude, I told you it was the right bat. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Good call. Phil Mickelson had his short game working on the par fives. And birdied both holes. <laughs> Trevor Immelman posted a second straight 68, capped by birdies here at 17 and 18. The thing is, you just got to go out there and, uh, and play play as well as you can play. And the other thing you've also got to realize is that even the best players in the world get nervous and they feel pressure. And, uh, you know, I guess it's just who can disguise it the best and who can handle it the best. Tiger Woods birdied the first hole and seemed in good position to make another at two. I just uh, flipped it, you know, I'm trying to put more spin on it, trying to loft it up there with a lot of spin, to, and I uh, overdid it. He bogeyed and was back to even par. Brant Snedeker, like Immelman, also birdied 17 and 18 and trailed the leader by one. In his last three Masters, Retief Goosen has two ties for third and one for second. He eagles 13 and finishes six back. Mickelson caps a bogey-free round with a birdie at 17 and a 68. Yeah, I feel pretty good. I, I would rather be leading. I, might, I would like to have some shots in hand, but uh, you know, I've hit the ball well and I've been playing well and I'm only a couple shots off the lead and, and I'll be able to uh, play late in the afternoon on Saturday and hopefully Sunday as well. Ian Poulter made a hole in one yesterday at 16. Today, he needs twice as many strokes, a birdie and a 69.
Justin Rose, the first round co-leader, put his third shot in the water at 15. And his fifth, way over the green. On his way to a triple bogey and a round 10 strokes higher than day one. Tiger at 17. Put himself back into red numbers for the tournament. And then had to scramble to stay there. At 18, he drove into the trees on the right. And threaded his second shot up the 10th fairway. It left him with a blind pitch to the green. A shot he might have hold, except that it hit Stuart Appleby's ball and left this putt for par. A memorable four and a round of 71. Oh, well, I'm in, uh, I'm in good shape. I'm uh, obviously seven back, but um, yeah, I need to, need to play well. Obviously, we got some you know, tougher conditions coming in. And uh, stay patient, you know, this, this golf course, you know, you can can make up shots here quickly. Um, just got to hang in there. Trevor Immelman, the first round co-leader, has the lead to himself at the halfway mark. Brant Snedeker alone in second, and Phil Mickelson in a three-way tie for third. Paul Casey and Stephen Ames are four strokes back. Mike Weir, the 2003 Masters winner, heads a group at 141. The rookies from Milton High School all made the cut, which came at three over par. Sergio Garcia, Ernie Els, and last year's runner-up, Rory Sabatini, were among those who missed it. Fred Couples needed to birdie 18 to set a record for consecutive cuts made. It was the first time in his 24-year Masters career that he missed the weekend. Mid-amateur champion Trip Keeney eagled the 13th hole. But missed the cut by three and announced that he was ending his competitive golf career. To have an opportunity to play the weekend in the Masters tournament as a, basically a working man um, was all I ever wanted in life, to have that opportunity again. And to have the opportunity it was a dream come true. Michael Thompson was the only amateur left with a chance to make the cut. But at 15, his ball moved as he addressed a birdie putt. He called the penalty on himself and saw his chances to play the weekend come to an end. I'll tell you what, that boy is going to go a long way. He is really a fine player. He's a great kid, too. Uh, that's so unfortunate to happen. You know, I've always tried to be honorable on the golf course and be respectful. You know, honor the guys I'm playing with, honor um, the course, honor the game. And uh, um, I, I guess I'm, I'm glad I could display it here in front of so many people. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that it happened. He finished plus seven. No amateur made the cut. 30 years ago, Gary Player won his third and final Masters title. Today, at age 72, he finished playing in a record 51st Masters. Went out in style with a round of 78. And announced he'd be back next year to play again. Saturday, 30 minutes before the start of play, the chairman of the competition committees, Fred Ridley, holds his daily meeting to review all contingencies. There's a fast-moving front coming through Augusta. Enough rain to stop play for three quarters of an hour before any of the leaders has teed off. Some fans hold their positions. 
Everyone waits for the front to clear. At 16, the hole is cut on the top shelf of the green. Justin Rose makes a brilliant birdie in a round of 73. Sweden's Nicholas Foss at the second hole. Go. Skip. Makes eagle, but shoots 76. Robert Allenby at 10. Another eagle and a round of 72. Tiger Woods, second shot at the par five second. Sets up his own chance for eagle, but settled for birdie. Zach Johnson makes four birdies on the first nine, including this one at six, and is tied with Tiger. Paul Casey makes four birdies on the first nine. And he's tied for the lead. Tiger for birdie at 10. Five behind. Phil Mickelson is just three back at the eighth hole. But the bad bounce off the flagstick leads to a three putt bogey. Trevor Immelman has fallen one stroke off the lead at eight. But birdies to tie. He's paired with Brant Snedeker, who curls in a birdie for the sole lead at nine under. Masters rookie Andres Romero Paired today with Tiger Woods. Hits his tee shot at 12. For the second of his three birdies at Amen Corner. Both he and Woods are five back as Tiger plays 16. Now will it hold? It will not. He was two feet away from a perfect tee shot. Now he's 65 feet away from an uphill birdie effort. He made par. Retief Goosen at 13. Eagles for the second day in a row and it's tied with Tiger. Tiger at 17. Almost Eagles and gets to five under par. Halfway through round three, Brant Snedeker in his first Masters as a professional has a one stroke lead. Tiger is four back and playing bogey free golf today. Robert Carlson for birdie at 16. The six foot five inch Swede gets to four under par. For the second day in a row, Tiger has driven into the trees at 18. I, I had 180 the hole and I had to hit the right track as, as well as the right line and I said either you, you're making six or you're making four, one of the two, and uh, let's go ahead and try to make four here. He said he had a six foot wide gap to get through the trees.
but still left himself a tester for par. And a round of 68. I put myself right back in the tournament. This is the highest scores I could have shot today, and if I, you know, a few more putts go in, I'm, I'm right there, but uh, I'm still right there anyways. Snedeker bogeyed 11 and 12 and went for the green at the par 5 13th. It didn't hook and led to another bogey. I hit it solid, high, everything I wanted to do with it, just didn't turn it over. And, and I guess I figured out why people call it aiming corner. Immelman laid up at 13. If you gave me 50 balls, I'd probably pull that shot off twice. And birdie. At this point, the 28-year-old South African had a two-stroke lead over Steve Flesh and Paul Casey, with Snedeker three back and Woods trailing by four. Casey was at the 16th hole. And birdied to cut the lead to one. Immelman at 14. Birdied to go back in front by two. Snedeker for birdie at 14. Stayed three back. Mickelson, struggling all day, had put his tee shot in the bunker above the hole at 16. And from where the ball finally came to rest, he three putted for double bogey. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know where it really came from because I felt like I was hitting the ball well. I was hitting, hitting some good putts and uh, I don't know what happened. I certainly uh, had a little misstep on eight, but uh, gosh, it didn't, it didn't feel bad. I felt like I was gonna have a good round today. I don't know what to say. The par five 15th was pivotal. Brant Snedeker's third shot. It's probably the, the hardest 90-yard shot you'll find anywhere in golf. He executed almost perfectly and would have that for birdie. The leader had virtually the same shot. Here's David Faraday's call of it. Again, he struck it well. No, that doesn't need to spin too much. Oh, gone. Oh, oh, there is a tiny flat spot just here. Oh, oh, he doesn't even want the crowd to be noisy. Now I've got to confess, I've hit balls in the water there in practice from that same position. It's such a tough shot. You know, people watching on TV don't realize how tough that shot is. And, uh, you know, I just got too much spin on it, but luckily it stayed up. A potential double bogey turned into par. Snedeker for birdie. Tied for second. Two behind. Everybody was talking at 18. That's all I got. Come on. Steve Flesh said, that's all I got. And it was enough for birdie and a round of 69. Brant Snedeker's caddy did the talking. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. And apparently, the ball listened. Now Immelman. Sit down. Sit down. The ball sat two feet from the hole. All I can ask for myself is to go out there and um, 
you know, play as hard as I can and believe in myself. You know, I got to believe in myself tomorrow and uh, hope for the best. Snedeker finished a round of 70. That left him alone in second, playing in the final pairing on Sunday. Well, now you're playing in the final group on Sunday at the Masters, mm -hmm. a chance to win your first major. Yeah. When will that sink in? Hopefully it won't sink in until I have the green jacket on the wall. I mean, that's... Yeah, that's why I'm here. That's why I came here to play this week. It was not to make a good show of it. It was come here to win. And, and I'm playing good golf. I've done everything the right way so far. I've been very patient and, and just try to execute my golf shots. I'm going to keep doing that tomorrow. Now, what, what lies in for tomorrow, I don't know. It's going to be a tough day from what we hear on the forecast. And you know, the tougher, the better. We'll find out who, who really deserves to win this thing tomorrow. The leader for a two-stroke advantage. And his third straight round in the 60s. Tiger Woods was favored to win this Masters, but he will have to make up six strokes and catch four players in order to win again. Under difficult conditions on a demanding golf course, Trevor Immelman has taken his game to a new level. Among those in a tie for seventh is the defending champion, Zach Johnson. His 68 is his best score ever at Augusta National. Masters Sunday. Time to find out what's inside of you. Time to find out how much game you've got. Masters Sunday. A tradition of fathers and sons. And the green jacket and the men who wear it. Welcome to Augusta National Golf Club and the Masters final day. The wind is up, gusting to 30 miles an hour, swirling. Morning. Good Morning. Afternoon. How are you doing today? Great. It's a little day. nervous. <laughs> a little nervous? A little nervous. It's a good problem to have, though. At 220, the leader heads to the first tee. He is four months removed from a cancer scare that left a seven inch scar across his back. Surgery for a benign tumor on his diaphragm. I'm so competitive, and I've played this game since I was five years old, and all I ever wanted to do was win golf tournaments. You know, I realized that it can get taken away from you real fast, and, um, you know, I feel like I've been loaned a talent and uh, try and do as well as I can. His drive is in trouble, and he bogeys the first hole. At 16, Heath Slocum. The town of Milton, Florida, can be proud of its trio of Masters rookies. Two finished in a tie for 20th, Slocum in a tie for 33rd. Nick Watney, another Masters rookie. With a shot, he'll always remember at the 14th hole. He finished tied for 11th. In the final pairing, Brant Snedeker also bogeyed the first hole, but has this putt to tie the lead. An eagle at number two. And I just kept saying to myself, well, 
you know, we're tied at this point, so, you know, I'm still not doing too bad. And I just knew I had to hang in there because there's just so much golf to be played. Contenders falter, Tiger for par at four. Falls six behind. Snedeker in a buried lie at the third hole. Makes bogey here, and at six, and at seven. Paul Casey bunkered at four. Made double bogey here, and four more bogeys on the first nine. Tiger on the tee at six. Immelman at five. Birdies. Tiger remains six back. The leaders approach to seven. And we'll have that for a five shot lead on the field. But pulls it. Steve Flesh, eight under on the par fives this week. Gets another birdie and is alone in second place. Bill Mickelson at 14 makes his second birdie in a row. But it's his final birdie of this Masters. After missing the short putt for birdie at seven, Immelman drove in a bunker and now three putts the par five eight. His lead down to two. And then his approach to nine is bunkered. And he faces another difficult putt to save par. That save might have been the most important putt of his first nine. Tiger at 11 after a bogey at 10, this from over 70 feet. A roar heard round the course. One more look. The leader was standing on the 11th tee. He had a two-stroke lead on Flesh, four on Snedeker, and five on Woods. The history of the Masters tells us that not one of those leads was safe, not on the second nine, not on Sunday. Robert Carlson at the 15th hole from 256 yards.
an eagle, and a demonstration of what could happen on the par fives. Steve Flesh, two behind the leader at 12. Got caught on the wind and made double bogey. Tiger at the par five, 13th. Oh, Tiger, bite. Pushed his tee shot and would have to lay up. Immelman scrambling again, playing his third at the par 4 11th. The chip shot was a lot better than where it finished. It only needed about another foot to roll down real close. And got stuck up in the fringe there and... You know, I knew the putt was going to break from the right and uh, kind of threw it out there, maybe two or three cups outside. And when I hit it, I knew it had a good chance. Another critical par save. <laughs> Tiger over his third at 13. A birdie would leave him just four behind. Immelman on the tee at the dangerous 12th. Twelve, I was just trying to play to the left side of the green, and I just hit it too good through the breeze with an eight iron, and ball went up into the pine straw. There definitely wasn't ideal. Tiger with a chance to send another message back to the leader. Walked off the green, talking to himself. Immelman with no easy shot at 12. Obviously from there I was just trying to protect hitting it into the water with a chip. He chipped well short and made bogey. Snedeker was four over on his round, putting for birdie. Tiger heard that roar as he stood in the fairway at 14. And came off the shot. And three putted for bogey. Immelman's lead was back to three. Tiger was five behind and running out of chances. At 13, Immelman stuck to his game plan. Obviously, I took note of how Zach won last year with laying up on all the par fives. I needed to have a four iron or less to go for one of the greens. Snedeker coming off birdie at 12, tried to put pressure on the leader. 13 out of four iron in that hole and golly, man. If somebody could tell me I'll play that second shot, I'd love to know because that's two days in a row I've hit it right in the middle at Bonner. He bogeyed. Immelman didn't. Get closer. Get closer. Tiger at 15, 265 yards. Up. 
Immelman's birdie at 13. Five stroke lead, five holes to play. Woods chipping for Eagle at 15. Settled for par. On the tee at 16. Thinking maybe he'd have a chance with three straight birdies. His fellow competitor, Stuart Sink, showed him the way. And was tied for second place. Tiger had the tougher putt. And made another par. Immelman over the green at 14, but putting. Save par. And now seemed to have this Masters firmly wrapped up. Four tough holes to play, but a six-stroke lead to see him through. Zach Johnson had a tough day on Sunday, but a smile as he walked to the 18th green. He finished tied for 20th. Trevor Immelman faced that daunting third at 15 once again. And made sure this one wouldn't spin back towards the water. He parred and seemed past all the trouble. Just take the pond out of play at 16. But it didn't work out that way. I made a poor swing and I pulled it. The ball was in the water. Tiger for birdie at 18. Too little and way too late. Even with the leader putting for bogey. I didn't look at a leaderboard all day, and I kind of felt like I was doing okay, because even though I made a double, people were clapping for me. <laughs> and I was like, man, this is just not right. So I figured I was doing okay. He had a three-stroke lead with two holes to play. Uh, I just didn't make, make the putts I needed to make uh, this entire week. You know, I, I, I had the speed right. Um, I just didn't quite get the line right. And I got to 17, I had a beautiful tee shot, and I had a great second shot with a 50 degree wedge. And I mean, it was a foot from being stiff. But you know, I tried not to get too upset. I just try to keep my emotions in check. Hit a great bunker shot and managed to, you know, sneak that putt in there from about three feet. And then 18, I hit the drive of the week into the biggest divot you've ever seen. <laughs> and we got down there and my caddy said, it's not going to be easy. You knew it wasn't going to be easy. <laughs> and uh, I just put an eight iron back in my stance and just ripped at it. Thankfully, it came out straight and I was real happy to see that it stayed on the right level. He shook hands with Brant Snedeker and walked to the final green. His wife, Carmenita, and son, Jacob. Snedeker had this putt to tie Tiger for second. 
A disappointing 77, but a Masters he should take nothing but pride in. I was trying to figure out how I was going to four putt to win the tournament. Because <laughs> I, I didn't think I could do it. Luckily, I only needed two. His parents, his gallery, his family. Being the final parent in two days is something I'm very proud of to, to be coming back here next year. You know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we won't end up here in tears all over again. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I found out a lot about myself today and, and obviously a lot about myself right now. So uh, we'll keep working. Yes, sir. When he was five years old, Trevor Immelman met Gary Player. Now, 30 years after player's final win at the Masters, Immelman wears the same color jacket. He left me a voicemail last night, and uh, you know, it gave me goosebumps. He told me that, that uh, he believed in me and I need to believe in myself. He just told me to go out there and, uh, and be strong through adversity because he said that adversity would come today and I just had to deal with it. You know, I took that all to heart and uh, you know, I'm obviously thankful for the message and I'm sure he's proud of me.